Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jacqueline and today we're looking at the Victorian design style. I'm sure like a lot of you, you're also in a festive mood just like me and a movie I watch every year around this time is A Christmas Carol. And there's so many different adaptations, two of my favourites being the Disney version and the Muppets version, and even last weekend we watched a new adaptation called Scrooge. But one thing they all have in common is that they're set in Victorian England, of course because that was when Charles Dickens, the author, wrote the book in 1843. At the time, people in Britain didn't really have the energy to celebrate Christmas, mainly because of the treatment of the poor and children working in appalling conditions. So Dickens actually wrote the book to express his concerns about poverty and social injustice. The book completely resonated with people at the time and also captured the Christmas frenzy within the mid-Victorian era. And many of our ideas about what makes Christmas what it is, including the phrase Merry Christmas, were first seen in Charles Dickens' famed story. Ultimately, he and other Victorians inspired many different aspects of Christmas we still continue today like the seasonal food and drink, decorating the Christmas tree, giving presents, games, family gatherings and being generous and charitable around Christmas time. And in light of that, this week's interior design style we're going to be diving into is a Victorian design style. The Victorian era, like the name suggests, was a period from 1837 to 1901 named after Queen Victoria and her reign. Victorian interiors are defined by their spacious rooms, high ceilings, ornamentation, elaborate decorations and extensive fireplaces. With fabrics, decorative arts, and furniture now mainstream, homeowners were able to invest in decorating their spaces. What was once a hobby for the upper class was now accessible to the common person. Of course, there's many different types of Victorian architecture and interiors, and they're very different in terms of aesthetics. However, what I'm going to be referring to is primarily British Victorian interiors. The first thing to note about Victorian residences is of course their interior architecture. The key internal features of Victorian houses are what make them so unique from other eras of residential buildings. Where we see features like crown moulding, built-in bookcases, wainscoting, stained glass, wrought iron, ornate banisters, bay windows and a fireplace in every room. The drawing room, which was a room where visitors were entertained, had the most domineering fireplace as it was usually one of the largest rooms in the house and because it was a focal point, it was a great place to display a collection of ornaments. A huge part of Victorian interiors are, of course, their dramatic colour schemes. The Victorians were very heavily influenced by Gothic design, which is why dark blues, greens, deep reds and black were the colours of choice. Dark and mysterious interiors featuring rich and decadent colours were the main backdrops to Victorian living spaces. In the first part of the time, dark tones like burgundy, forest green, navy and brown were popular. Dark shades were actually chosen purposefully to hide any ash and soot created by coal fires that were used as the main heating supply. Victorian Britain experienced a new wave of technologies entering the era, meaning that new techniques could be advantageous for home decorating. And a significant part of that was seen through textiles like wallpaper. Previously, wallpapers had been used using vegetable dyes which had muted tones. However, the new aniline dyes that were invented could create punchier colours. Along with the dyes, new weaving and printing techniques meant that those colours could be used for any type of home textiles such as curtains, wallpaper and upholstery, which was a huge game changer for society at the time. Mass-produced wallpapers including flock, damask and bold prints of flowers and vines were amongst the most popular designs. Alongside softer fabrics, other materials were produced as a result of the Industrial Revolution, one of which laid the foundations of entryways and corridors everywhere. The material in question? Tile. 
Towards the second half of the era, tile geometric floors with repeating patterns with a new rage. Porcelain manufacturer Herbert Minton revived the lost art of making encaustic tiles by combining his family's knowledge of ceramics with the newly developed methods of production. The tiles were made by layering different colours of clay, so a single tile would essentially contain a pattern that ran through the whole way of the tile. Hard-wearing, functional and beautiful, geometric tiles from this era are still used in houses today. And although these tiles were gorgeous, the novelty about them meant that they came with a hefty price tag. In fact, most of the time these were only seen in rich family homes, but even then they could only afford to lay them in the entryway section of the house. And because of that, wooden flooring was most commonly used throughout the home. However, because the Victorians were grandiose people, the flooring had to emphasise their love of pattern and ornamentation. It couldn't just be boring. The attitude was all about going big at home. Wooden parquet flooring was a way of adding intrigue to an otherwise simple floor material. And to level up interiors even further, people often covered their wooden flooring with rugs to add warmth and opulence. At the time, Victorians had combined a number of styles to create their own. Gothic, Tudor, Rococo, Neoclassical and many others, and because of that, proper Victorian furniture is quite hard to recognise. So there wasn't really a singular style that shone in the era, but there was one thing that the furniture all had in common – excess of ornamentation. Decoration was a symbol of social class, so the larger the furniture, the more pattern and tassels not only meant that you had the latest trends, but you were actually classier for having them. Heavily carved wooden pieces, overstuffed button-back chairs, sofas and ottomans, cloisonné metalwork, and of course gold gilding were all just a few examples of very decorative Victorian furniture. Pristinely polished dark woods were common, like walnut or mahogany. Some of my favourite furniture items for this style are secretaire desks, card tables, pedestal desks, demi-loon tables, spoonback armchairs and tall open bookcases. If you're in search of the perfect sofa to fit your Victorian scheme, a Chesterfield sofa would fit in seamlessly. Before Victorian times, furniture had been designed for practicality rather than comfort, but that all started to change when Victorians started to look at the comfort in their chairs. The luxurious features like the deep-set buttoning and coiled spring suspension were added to the design, which improved comfort but also made them quite trendy. It's actually still a very popular sofa style today, just as much as it was during the 19th century. Lighting these dark, moody, spacious interiors was quite a task, given that the light bulb was only invented until the late 1800s. Therefore, gas, oil lamps and candles were the only source of light other than sunlight. If you're looking to decorate in this style, it's very easy to find mimic gas pendant lamps to create the same striking effect. In particular, large chandeliers that fit snugly in a ceiling rose. However, a classic is of course to use tall candlesticks, which remind me a lot of the one Scrooge has in the book. Especially along extensive dining tables and living room mantel places. Lavish brass candle holders or wall sconces would easily create a Victorian ambiance.
To really create that sensation of living in quintessential Victorian times, we of course cannot forget to look at home decor elements. In houses at the time, decoration was added to ceilings, floors, doorways, and even window frames because bare empty rooms were seen as poor taste. The goal was to show abundance, and some items to highlight that are carpets, newel post lamps, displayed china, lace doilies, velvet cushions, pleated lampshades, ornate clocks, harps or pianos, a tea set, sculptures, bird cages, mirrors above the mantelpiece, and other Victorian inventions like the gramophone to really create a feel of the era. A mixture of these items in your home is instantly going to feel like it's jumped straight out of a Christmas carol. In the Victorian home, like I mentioned, the fireplace was becoming more than just a way to heat your home. Mantelpieces meant that you could display certain items on top to display your wealth or impress your guests. And showcasing flamboyant floral arrangements is the perfect way to include some nature to the interior. Of course, if you're thinking specifically for Christmas, the Victorians didn't exactly have the choice or flashy ornaments like we do today. Although they still managed to create cosy Christmas atmospheres by using classic foliage found in the winter season. Look to creating your own garlands, wreaths and natural decorations for the festive season to create the most authentic Victorian vibe. Real Christmas trees, holly, pine cones, berries, leaves and conifer cuttings will provide you with everything you need. To decorate a Victorian home, there of course must be some kind of art. And funnily enough, it was the Victorians who actually popularised gallery walls as we know them today. Before the Victorians, they were known as salon walls, and they were only really seen in museums, galleries, and large mansions or palaces. So it was the Victorians that brought them into their home and made them their own. New photography and printing methods meant that people could have portraits of relatives, landscape paintings, and all kinds of other artwork. And I think this abundance of new opportunity was why they actually wanted to decorate each and every last bit of wall space. Although, don't get it twisted, each item was placed in a carefully organised layout. For a modern setting, be more selective with your artwork and choose abstract pieces and contemporary art to update the interior. If you want a classic Victorian look, you can easily buy already curated sets of artworks. Accompanied with an array of gold frames, the space will instantly create the spirit of the time. Of course, this wouldn't really be a video by me if I didn't recommend some kind of book collection to read or scatter around your Victorian home, in case you're decorating your period home right now. So here are some books that I think would really tie the scheme together, but more importantly, a perfect reads for the theme this week.
What do you guys love about Victorian interiors? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see even more content from us, you can now become a channel member and gain access to a private page, design advice, behind the scenes vlogs, and so much more stuff. So if you want the details to that, just click the join button on our channel page. And if you can't see that, you can access it by YouTube's website on a laptop. And as usual, please leave me a like or an emoji down below because that honestly really does help to grow our channel. But that's it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have an amazing festive season. This is actually the last video we're doing this year. So I hope you have a very happy holidays and I will see you in the new year. Bye, guys. Thank you.